we pretty much created and demoed an entire Vagrant setup, even though it was super simple and it was a little bit tedious. For example, we went through each of these settings and walked through what's, what's happening on them on a per item basis versus just having it all happen at once. And I did that on purpose so we can show the five different items. So let's cover the last item, which is called provision or provisioning. And this means simply, what if we wanted to offer, what if we wanted to do something after Vagrant Up? Like maybe we wanted to install Vim after Vagrant Up. Or what if we wanted to install Apache for us so we can automate this entire thing that we've just done? So I'm going to uncomment this last boilerplate code. And just to keep things clean, call this provision set or provisioning settings. And there's two ways to do provisioning. You can see we're just putting our shell commands in line. This is called the inline method. The other method is you can reference a file so that you don't have to put it in here. And I'll show you what that is later. I like to do that method. It's a lot cleaner. All right. So what we need to do is let's destroy all our hard work and kill off this box because we want to automate this. And so when we run Vagrant up now, rather than doing reload independently all at one time, we'll load the base box operating system. We'll assign our memory to our provider. We'll forward all the ports. We'll sync the folders and what we'll do is we'll install Apache so we can automatically do have our folder be synced. Let's do it. And hopefully this works on first try. Let's uh, copy and paste this IP. And I'm going to change this now just in case uh, we'll do like it's a bunch of lorem ipsum. It's just so when this runs, we definitely know it's a new page. Now, we kind of missed this because I was doing that. But what we have here is a really crazy amount of output. Don't be startled. Let's bring it back to the beginning and go through. So just like we were before, it's saying import the box, forward the ports for, so we can access it through the browser, do the thing so we can connect through SSH, which is happening automatically for us. All this other stuff of linking it to the provider, mounting the shared folders, we're mounting the Vagrant demo to var www. So now those are linked and it's, it's telling us all this these different things. And then finally, it gets to our final step provisioning and it says provisioning shell through inline script, which was just update and install Apache. That's all this green stuff here. So all these success messages, if there's a warning or an error, it will probably be a different color depending on your terminal, but this isn't a, this is just a warning. It's not really an error, even though my terminal has it as red. All right, let's refresh here and Hopefully we see all this new code, which we do. We essentially, this is a real Vagrant environment now. We could take this, imagine if we just had a plain HTML and CSS and we wanted to share this with somebody. You can take this file, you can commit it with the Git repo, give it to somebody who is working on your team, they can clone it down and all they have to do is run Vagrant up. That is the benefit and dream setup with Vagrant. That is the professional way to do local development. Now, real quick, just to show you the other way that you could do provisioning rather than doing in, in line for imagine if you had like a huge amount of bash, uh, scripts written out here, it would be crazy. Like it's just next thing, you know, you're going to look like those examples that we sent th that we kind of went through earlier of those popular Vagrant repos. What you could do is reference it. So the difference is rather than inline, we're just going to say, Hey, path install.shell, or you can call it whatever you want. But now I'm going to create a file called install.shell. 
I'm going to do app get update or app get install Apache 2 with the yes uh, flag just so it's automatic. And then, well, technically, you don't need sudo here because this runs as a root. However, this is what I like to do a nice little trick. You can do, there's an, just like I was saying, tip of the iceberg, there's always an extra settings. You can do provision the shell through path install.sh is what we we're going to run, but we want privileged false. That means don't run it as a root. This means in my install.shell, I have to run it with sudo. There's not really a difference here. The only reason I like to do this is one time I ran into an issue and I don't quote me on this, but I was installing node and for some reason I was getting weird permission issues. So I had to do sudo with the privileged off for it to work in the way that I wanted. That's all. That's the only reason I do that. And for that reason, now I'm like married to this idea, but either way, what we could do is run figuring up or destroy an up. And it would be the exact same thing as what we just did. That's provisioning. That's the automated process. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about kind of how this gets even more complex. But this right here it, at its core is everything you need to know about Vagrant.